Setting up a LAMP dev environment with Retrobox, Faker, and Puppet. We're going to begin by downloading and installing the required software. First, we're going to grab Virtualbox. We're not actually going to do anything with it once you install it. You'll notice later that I just sort of minimize it. We rely on Vagrant to control Virtualbox. So we don't deal with Virtualbox directly, but it still needs to be installed. First thing I'm doing is grabbing a copy of a uh, a puppet script. It has the vagrant and puppet code necessary to control everything automatically. Of course, uh, I'm biased. This is one that I wrote on GitHub GitHub.com/slash/pigeontech. I call it CPT server. You can grab the zip file or you could do a git clone. It takes a while to download Virtualbox and Vagrant, they're pretty big files. After you install Virtualbox, go to Vagrant. And after installing Vagrant, you have to restart your computer. Okay, watch, I just sort of close virtual box right there. It's still running in the background. Okay, now the virtual box and Vagrant are installed. We have to run our Vagrant script, you type Vagrant up. First, we're going to look at the config, the config file. You might want to change some things. I'm pointing out here that these are the, uh, the virtual hosts. Virtual hosts let you create like a domain for your website. You can even have a fake extension like .dev instead of .com. So when you type Vagrant up, it, the very first time it runs, it has to actually download a Linux box, which is a few hundred megabytes, so it takes a while. I uh, trimmed the video for time, of course. After this, you can try it out in your browser, and it works, hopefully. <laughs> Something I'm pointing out next is uh, to xdebug, the folder that it's installed into. It's like based on date, like 20121113, and, su and such forth. That might ha cause problems because you might have a newer version of the plugin installed and it will have a different folder name. See right there, 20121212 xdebug.so. Well, just make sure if there's any problems that that's not what the problem is. If you didn't change your password for MySQL, then it's going to default to Vagrant. So far in my in my script on GitHub, you can only set your password the very first time you run it. You can't change it unless you 
go into Linux and do it yourself. That's just an extra HTML file that Apache puts there automatically. It's safe to delete. Okay, now we're going to create a sample website. Blah. This is just to demonstrate how to set up your virtual hosts so that you can access it with blah.dev or www.blah.dev I've since updated my project on github to the config file looks a little bit different now, better in my opinion. You can edit your PHP error levels and such now. This part is pretty slow, you, you should probably fast forward here. All I'm doing is setting that IP address, to, there is no place like home 127.0.0.1 to the various uh, domains, the, the names I'm using as domains. There isn't actually a WordPress installed right now, but that's just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to add a blah.dev and www.blah.dev and they'll both point to that IP address which will make the website work on our development computer. Now this is the host file. Um, all operating systems have something like this. Now we have to type vagrant provision. This restarts our operating system with the new settings applied. I'm not sure if it restarts, but but it applies to the settings that we have changed. Sometimes Chrome doesn't like you to input weird URLs. I love trains. Not. Okay, Composer is a tool that the script installed for you. It's what PHP developers are using these days. It helps you with package management, installing libraries and such. This is just a simple demonstration.
I'm installing PHP unit with Composer. And what it does is it downloads it for you and creates an auto loader. And then you would include that into your project. This is a tool you'll use if you want libraries such as a framework like Symfony or Laravel. It runs pretty slow. And it downloaded PHP unit into a vendor folder. It would download any other libraries to that vendor folder too. Now MySQ Workbench, it's it's a desktop application that could be handy with managing your database. Here I'm just showing how to connect to your database with it. Some people have problems with it. Some don't. It can be tricky because you're not just connecting to a database stored on your computer, you're connecting to a database stored in the sandbox in a copy of Linux that's running on your computer, the virtual box. You're actually running Linux on your computer. Here I'm demonstrating Xdebug. Just pretty much verifying that it works by setting some variables and then running it and seeing what happens. Seeing if we can pause it and uh, step through the variables as they're being set in PHP Storm or, or in, uh, any other IDE that you're using. That project URL is the thing you have to remember to, to update to the same thing as your virtual host. Lots of people have problems with Xdebug trying to configure it to work with the IDE and uh, hopefully with the settings, the default settings, it'll work okay with you. But if not, you can play around with them in the config file. Here I'm stepping through and Analyzing, see if Xdebug is working. And you're 
Dungeon from here.